Hey everybody, today I thought it might be fun to take a closer look at the stock Brembo Big Break Kit that comes with the M2 Competition. So let's start with the front caliper. You can see we have a nice big six piston caliper, right? One, two, three on this side, three on the other side. And uh, from this fixed bridge, it looks like it's a mono block, uh, which means this is a one piece forging. You know, there's no two separate halves and there's no hardware connecting the two halves together. Um, the downside of having this fixed bridge though is it means that the pads are not top loading. So when you change the pads, you have to insert them from the bottom, which means you have to take this caliper off of the uh, knuckle and away from the rotor. But having such a you know, thick fixed bridge means that this is a very rigid piece, uh, lending to an overall very solid caliper. If we take a look at some of the markings on this, uh, let's move it this way so it's a little bit easier to see. We can see down here it says made in Italy and Brembo, so we know it's made by Brembo and in Italy. And then uh, we can see over here we have a BMW marking and at the top we see a 30, 34, 36 and that is the size of the pistons in this. So we have a 30 millimeter, 34 millimeter and 36 millimeter piston. Moving around to the back side we can see where the brake line would go in. We have this little QR code thing. Maybe that's to you know, make sure it's authentic uh, in the case that uh, there's any doubt. Um, and there's not really too much else back here. Uh, you know, you can see the caliper bracket over here. And, uh, you know, this, uh, this is what adapts it to go to your knuckle. And on top, we can see these two large uh, Torx bolts uh, that hold it to there. And uh, when you're servicing these, like, you know, removing the caliper for brake pads, whatever, um, for some reason, BMW says never undo these bolts, uh, but you can. But good luck finding the torque spec to put them back in. Also at the top here, we can see there's this uh, spring clip, and that's to apply tension to the pad so they're not uh, rattling around or making noise in daily driving. Um, and then also on the pads themselves, you can see these large weights, um, which also serve the same function. You know, they try and, uh, damp uh, high frequency vibrations um, by adding weight. Uh, looking at the bottom of the caliper, you can see the line that goes from one side to the other, and this is what allows the brake fluid to go from one side to the other. Uh, since this is kind of like a monoblock cali caliper, you kind of do need to have this external line here. And at the top, if we wanted to remove these pads, we would first have to knock out these pins. So you can see there's these uh, two holes here and you just knock the pins back so you can take the pad out at the bottom. Now this caliper is quite big, which also unfortunately means it's quite heavy. And on my scale, the entire assembly here, so you know, the pads, pins, hardware, you know, caliper itself, it came in at 16 pounds, 14.7 ounces. And uh, just the caliper alone is about 10.7 pounds. Next, let's take a look at the front brake pads that come with the caliper. So down here at the bottom, this is the stock pad uh, from the M2 Competition Six Piston Brembo brake caliper. And as you can see, this thing is just massive. Like up here, this is a uh, this is a pad made for the original M2 and the M3, M4, the blue brakes. And you can see like. <laughs> The, the M2 competition brake pad is like twice as wide as this one uh, and, and roughly the same, the same height. Um, and even up here, this is a uh, brake pad from my uh, new AP Racing uh, brake kit. And you can see that the stock brake pad has way more surface area than even this guy. So this is just a absolutely massive brake pad. You can see it's got a Brembo logo here. Um, but there's also a Paget marking here, so it seems like this is made by Paget for Brembo's uh, kit. And uh, you can also see from where the pistons uh, index and the sides that there's no grease on this. And BMW doesn't actually want you to grease these pads or any of the friction contact sliding pad surfaces. Now this pad also has a decent amount of material on it. I measured uh, about 13 and a half millimeters of pad material uh, past the backing plate. Um, compare that to the uh, uh, AP Racing Endurance pad that I have up here. They advertise 25 millimeter thick pads, but the actual pad material itself is only 18 millimeters. So going from this guy to an aftermarket kit, you gain about five millimeters of pad. And I don't even remember what the uh, base blue brake 
uh, pads thickness are, but uh, it's definitely less than what you start off with, with the Brembo Big Brake pad. Next, let's take a look at the front rotors. So here is one of the rotors, and this guy is a massive 400 millimeters in diameter, and it is 36 millimeters thick. Um, it has an aluminum hat and the iron, uh, iron rings, uh, and you can obviously see that it's cross-drilled. Um, one of the nice things about this is uh, BMW includes text along the hat, and if you let me zoom in on that here, it'll be upside down, but they tell you what the minimum thickness is. In this case, it's 34.4 millimeters. BMW likes to use a 1.6 millimeter wear margin across all of their rotors. Um, all the ones I've seen for the F series, whether it be, you know, a base, you know, floating caliper, uh, 320, or, you know, these uh, M, M rotors right here, uh, all of them use a 1.6 millimeter wear margin. Not all the rotors, however, have that minimum thickness stamped on here uh, on the rotor or on the hat. So having this is really nice. Um, also a little bit to the right of that here, you'll see there's an R, which tells you that this is the right rotor. And why is this a right rotor? Well, because of the veins down here. These veins are directional. They act as uh, fan blades to pump air from the center of the rotor and force it out to cool down the rotor uh, when you need it. So if the rotor is on the opposite side of the car it's supposed to be, well then these veins aren't doing a very good job of pumping air from the inside to the outside and cooling appropriately. Flipping the rotor upside down, we can better see you know, the uh, demarcation between the iron rings and the hat itself. And we'll notice that it is not a floating design. So there's no fasteners here. Um, or you know slots that allow the iron ring to expand and contract without applying any additional stress on the mounts. That said, with how big this thing is, um, there is a lot of thermal mass. This uh, rotor itself weighs 30.4 pounds. Also, because this rotor and the caliper are so large, you really need 19 inch wheels or larger to fit this system. Next, let's take a look at the rear brake caliper. Um, this rear brake caliper is so large, it could double for the front caliper on some models. In fact, I think this caliper is right around the same size as the front caliper for the blue brakes that come standard on the M3 and M4 and the base M2 non-competition. Just like that caliper, this caliper is also made by Brembo and it's a four piston design. We can also see at the top, right, there's a BMW logo, and over here near the brake line fitting, there's an L telling you that this is a left side caliper. The top design here is also very similar to the uh, front caliper on the M3, M4, and base M2, in that uh, there's no bridge going across here, which makes it really easy to swap brake pads. All you do is you knock out these two pins, pull the spring clip out the top, and the pads also come straight out the top. Um, this is super handy when you're at the track because, well, it's really easy to just pop out two pins and pull the pads out than having to unbolt the caliper from the knuckle or wheel carrier assembly. And just like that uh, front caliper, we can see that this is a monoblock design, so it's all, you know, one-piece forging, um, and that's why you see this external brake line channel going across. Uh, looking at the back, you know, once again, really similar to the front, we have a little QR code and then the, uh, the fitting. Um, also, looking at it from the bottom, once again, looks very similar. We have the aluminum uh, bracket to adapt it to whatever it's being mounted to. And then we have those two Torx bolts at the top, which secure the caliper to this bracket. And when I weighed this entire assembly, so all the hardware, the pads, the caliper, and the uh, uh, bracket, it came out to nine pounds, eight ounces, and the caliper alone uh, is about eight. Now I didn't see any markings on this caliper like the front which said what size the pistons are, but I looked it up and these have 28 millimeter pistons on all four. So let's take a look at the rear brake pads now. So at the bottom here we have the rear brake pad that came out of the uh, M2 Competition Brembo four piston caliper. And just like the front, right, we see it's got this nice Brembo marking and it's also made by Paget and there's no grease on any of these surfaces, not where the pistons contact or in any of the sliding surfaces. Um, I have a couple other pads here, once again, for comparison. This guy here on the left, this is the stock brake pad from the blue brakes, or the two piston um, uh, fixed caliper that comes on the M2 standard, M3 and M4, 
And uh, if we just flip this, this over to kind of take a look at the pad material itself, you can see like this just has so much more surface area than the, uh, the base blue brake pad. I mean, this guy looks absolutely tiny in comparison. Sure, it's a little bit taller, but um, this has way more surface area. Uh, and up to top here, we have once again the front pad from the uh, M3, M4, and base M2. And uh, you can see that this one is wider um, and probably has similar surface area to that. So uh, that's just kind of funny to see like, wow, you know, I basically took my front brakes and put them on the rear and then made the front brakes even larger for the M2. And then at the top here, once again, we have um, the AP Racing uh, brake pad. Um, and once again, you can see that there's more surface area on the stock brakes uh, of the M2 competition. Also, I measured uh, the pad thickness material at 12 millimeters um, past the backing plate. So there's 12 millimeters pad material there. And even on the AP Racing one, I only measured 11. So overall, the stock brakes have more pad. One thing that was interesting to note is that the rear pads don't have any weights on them to uh, dampen vibration or noise. And uh, that's something that, uh, you know, the stock front pads for the base M3, M4, and M2 uh, blue brakes did. This is an aftermarket track pad, which is why it doesn't have the weights, but that one did. Lastly, let's take a look at the rear rotor. Now, this guy is still massive for a rear rotor. This is uh, 280 millimeters in diameter uh, by 28 millimeters thick. And uh, for reference, the stock front rotor that came on the M3, M4, and M2 base blue brakes, well, that was also 380 millimeters. So you've basically, once again, taken the front braking system from the regular M3, M4 and put it on the rear of the car. And just like the other rotor, this one has uh, some nice information on the uh, hat here. If we zoom in a little, you can see BMW once again tells us which side it goes on. This one's the left side and the minimum thickness, which is 26.4. Makes sense because I just said this starts out at 28 millimeters thick and there's that 1.6 millimeter BMW wear. And just like the front, we see, you know, aluminum hat, iron rings, and, uh, you know, we see that it is once again a non-floating design. Um, but we also see that there are cooling vanes once again and they are directional. This rotor as a whole weighs 21 pounds. So as you can see, the best way to summarize the stock brake kit that comes with the M2 competition is beefy. These things are massive and they have a ton of rigidity and braking power. Um, really, I probably would have kept them if the front caliper had a quick top loading pad change capability. And it's really funny to think that the rear caliper and rotors, they basically just took from the front of the uh, old M2, M3, M4, stuck it on the back and said, well, let's make the front even larger. But you know, this is what they had in uh, the supply chain because this caliper and rotor system, uh, it's the same size, pretty much the same size that comes on the M3, M4 uh, carbon ceramic kit package. So uh, there's some cost savings for them there. And then I believe it's also shared on the X5M and the M5. So I hope you found that interesting and uh, we'll see you next time.